right. Well, hey, everybody. It's Grim Green from GrimGreen.com. Back here today. Thank you so much for joining me here on another Tuesday, Bro Tuesday. This is episode 17. I've got a whole mess of stuff to talk about this week. We're going to have some news and advocacy right here at the top of the program. We're also going to dive into some vape stuff stuff. The Goon Low Pro is going to be joining us this week, and I am Really excited to fiddle around with that device, with that device, with that RDA. I put some builds on it. I used it a little bit. I set it aside just for the Tuesday Bro Tuesday Q. We also have a new RTA. Ooh, joining us this week. Ah, and I always forget that it's not really a mystery because it's up in the title of the friggin' video. We are going to do some getting to know Grim Green as well as some viewer mails, and then we're going to wrap it all up at the end with a very random juice tasting. But welcome. Welcome to Tuesday Bro Tuesday. First thing Thing right out of the gate that I wanted to talk about is this new Cole Bishop bill. It's it's a bill. It's not just the Cole Bishop amendment. It's become it's become a new thing. And this is something that every vapor needs to throw their weight behind. And obviously by weight, I mean support. We need to throw all of our support behind this new bill. A lot of people have been talking about this lately. It's all over Facebook, and I'm gonna post a link down in the description to where you can read this whole article. Congressman Tom Cole, along with Congressman Sanford Bishop, introduced legislation today to ensure sensible regulations for newly deemed tobacco products by the Food and Drug Administration, named the FDA Deeming Authority Clarification Act of 2017. So right now, this is called the FDA Deeming Authority Clarification Act of 2017, which isn't catchy. We were talking about this on the VCC live stream. It's not a catchy name. It's not like HR 2058. This is going to be getting like a, a snappy name and a snappy number too. So we can all do hashtag support this, which is actually called the FDA Deeming Authority Clarification Act of 2017. This legislation would amend the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act to change the predicate date for newly deemed tobacco products, impose common sense licensing and advertising guidelines for vapor products, and direct the FDA to establish product standards for vapor product batteries. In 2009, the Tobacco Control Act gave the FDA authority to regulate tobacco products under a deeming process instead of using its flexibility to grandfather existing products in 2016 the fda finalized a deeming rule to assert jurisdiction over cigars pipe tobacco and vapor products using the february 15 2007 predicate date set in statute. Without this legislation, the FDA effectively is making it more difficult for vapor products to come to market than cigarettes. Even though Public Health England, the British version of our Department of Health and Human Services, published a report stating that vapor is 95% less harmful than cigarettes. This legislation builds on the Cole Bishop Amendment, which was introduced in the House version of the fiscal, fiscal year 2017 Agriculture Appropriations Bill. While there is disagreement about about whether certain tobacco products should be regulated or not, there should be agreement that new regulations should apply to products moving forward and not retroactively. Inconsistent authority like this will be detrimental and unfair to many manufacturers and businesses. This legislation preserves the FDA ability to regulate these products on part with cigarettes, grandfather's currently available products, and then requires the FDA's approval before any new products are introduced. He wraps it up by saying, vapor products offer a promising path for harm reduction for those seeking to quit or limit their smoking, says Bishop. This legislation would ensure the FDA's regulatory process does not limit the availability of safer tobacco options for those seeking to make and use them. Yes, that's awesome. This is fantastic. This is, this is just fantastic. Every vapor in the United States needs to put their full support behind this act, which again is called the FDA Deeming Authority Clarification Act of 2017. It's already getting off on the right foot. It has bipartisan support. We need to treat this like HR 2058 or like the Cole Bishop Amendment. We need to get as much support for this 
as we can. And that support comes from other Congress people. Remember in HR 2058, we were trying to get co-sponsors and supporters of that bill. That's the same thing we need to do with this. Unfortunately, HR 2058 died a horrible death, but now, but now we have the FDA deeming authority clarification act of 2017. Forget about everything else that we've been talking about with the FDA. This is where we need to focus. In addition to the right to be smoke free lawsuit campaign, this is where we need to focus. We need to be calling Congress people. We need to be calling senators. We need to get everybody that we possibly can to support this. And like I said, it's already started off with bipartisan support. Tom Cole and Sanford Bishop are Democrat and Republican respectively. So that's bipartisan support already, which is good. What this is gonna do is change the predicate date so that existing vapor products can remain on the market without having to go through the incredibly horrible process of a PMTA. It's gonna allow a lot more companies and a lot more businesses to stay in business, and it's gonna allow consumers to have safe, accessible access to vapor products. So yeah, this is just this is just fantastic. Chances are I'm going to be talking about this in the vlog again just because I want as many people as I can to get on board with this. But yeah, I'm going to post a link down in the description. Copy paste that link anywhere you want. Put it all over social media, put it all over Facebook and start calling those Congress people. So yeah, that's what I got for news. It is good news and it is big news. Now this, this FDA deeming authority clarification act of 2017 is going to be a long process. This is literally the first step. It doesn't even have a number assigned to it yet. So this is going to be like a year, maybe longer process of shuffling this through the house and getting support and getting co-sponsors and then shuffling it to the Senate and getting voted on and getting more support. And eventually it'll end up on the president's desk. Hopefully, eventually it'll end up on the president's desk to be signed into law. But this is going to be a long process. So don't lose your focus. Don't lose your enthusiasm. We have something now that all of us, and I mean every single vapor in the industry, in the community can get behind this. We have to, we have to get behind this. I wholeheartedly believe in it. I, it gets all the, it gets at least 20, maybe 25 banana stickers, which that's the most banana stickers I've ever given out. This gets that many banana stickers, we all need to support it. So yeah, that's kind of gonna, that's all I have for news this week. I thought it was so great. That's all I have for news this week. If I have some inconsequential news, it's that in April, I'm gonna be at Vape Jam UK. Yeah, it's confirmed. It's affirmative, 100% thing. I have a plane ticket. I have a hotel. I'm gonna bring some, my, my video camera stuff. We're gonna be shooting daily vlog videos and it's gonna be amazing. I can't wait it. I, I, I can't wait it. I can't wait. I love hanging out with my friends. I love hanging out with my friends in the UK. I'm really excited to see Dean Vaping Biker again. He is just such a cool stand-up dude. We are gonna shoot some video together. We're just we're just gonna shoot some video together because I feel like the world needs it because Dean, I need it because Dean is so cool. He's such a good guy. He's gonna be there as well. I'm looking forward to seeing all my international UK friends there. Again, oh, I'm so excited. And lastly, I I hate reminding people to do this. I hate it. It's just one of the dumbest things ever. Just click the like button. If you click it, boom, mental banana sticker right to your brain hole. Just if you like it, click the like button. If you don't like it, then don't click the like button. But if, if you're here and you've made it this far, ah, go ahead and click the like button. So what we are going to do right now is jump right into some friggin' vape stuff stuff. So joining us this week is the Goon Low Pro. So here's the bummer part about this. I got the Goon Low Pro in the mail when I was living at my old place. So when I moved into my new place, like everybody does, I had to pack up everything. I had to pack up all my stuff. And I had separate boxes and tubs for stuff that, okay, this is needs immediate attention. This is all the things for this. And it's going to go over here. And I'm trying to organize my entire office into boxes. So when I unpack it, I know where things go. I know where my current vapes are. I know what's in the Tuesday Bro Tuesday queue. And these all have homes and they all have certain places. Somewhere between the old place and the new place, 
I lost the accessories for the Goon Low Pro. Mine is in a matte black finish, but it also comes with an Ultim cap, an Ultim bottom and an Ultim top, and then an Ultim drip tip as well. I have the Ultim drip tip, don't have any of the other parts. I don't know where they are. I've turned my office upside down looking for them and I just don't have them. So I'm not gonna be able to speak to those parts. They are just Ultim versions of what you get with the Goon Low Pro, okay? So it's not like the end of the world that I don't have them. Just know that they're an option. They function similarly to the parts that I already have. They just look different. So I do have a build in here, but I haven't wicked it. I honestly haven't used the Goon Low Pro in quite a long time. I'm throwing it on my Evic Primo, which I just did a first impressions for, really enjoying this mod. It looks cool on the Evic Primo, like the matte black and the matte black match really well, and it looks kind of cool. What I've installed on here are some GM coils. These are flattened, polished aliens. They came out to point. 1, 8, which is pretty perfect for running on a regulated mod like this. So what I'm going to do is just wick this. I'm going to throw some juice on here and we're going to talk about how it vapes, the flavor level I get. I used it a little bit, so I have kind of a preconceived notion of how this is going to vape, but I'm gonna to try to look at this as like a completely blank slate. I do remember that building on this deck is kind of a bummer. The way that they did it, it's just really bizarre. We've all seen pictures of the Goon Low Pro deck. There's blocks in the middle and then you put your leads in and you screw them in sideways and then you kind of have to bend them down. You pull them down over the edge. You have to be pretty precise when you're building this. You have to pre-clip your leads to the exact right depth so that they go down and not hit the bottom, but still are able to get captured by those, by those plates. And then when you have it all in, you have to make sure you leave enough lead to pull them over to the side because you can't run them with the coils running vertically. You have to like pull them down to the side. Just makes the building process a lot longer and you have to be a lot more precise with it. Additionally, I found that I have to put pretty small builds in this, like no bigger than two and a half millimeters. You know what I mean? You're not fitting big four millimeter coils in here. Two and a half millimeters seems to be the biggest that you can go because even with that, they are right there. I mean, they are right there at the edge. And when I put this on here, I can see the coil like barely, almost barely touching the airflow slot. It, it, there's not a lot of room in this. And it is a 24 millimeter atomizer, but there's not a lot of room in this. And there's not a lot of room in this because the deck, like the actual block with the plates, takes up so much space in the middle of it, it leaves very little room for error as far as like spacing your coils away from the airflow. In fact, the first build I put on this was just a simple round wire build, but I built it around a three and a half millimeter because I wanted to see how big I could go in this. I put on the Ultim cap, I pressed the fire button and the Ultim cap was actually touching my coil and I melted the inside of that Ultim cap. So just something to keep in mind when you're building. If the quality of vape is really good off of this, then it's kind of worth it to kind of have to go through this whole building song and dance. You know what I mean? It pays off in the end because you're going to have like this great performance and this amazing vapor. But if in the end it's a little bit lackluster, then going through this whole complicated song and dance of being so precise with your leads and building them and getting them even and using eight screws. If you want to put dual coils in here, you will be tightening eight screws. That's, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of screws to be screwing down and screwing down and screwing down and screwing down. Then you flip it and you go one, two, that one's tight, three, four. It's just, it's a lot. It's basically double <laughs> of any other RDA. So yeah, let me just wick this real fast. Uh, we'll throw some juice on it and we'll talk about how it vapes. Ah, so yeah, I got it all wicked up. It's, it's really easy to wick and it's really easy to tuck your wicks down in there. I loaded this up with some bro trip from Grim Green Signature because this is a juice that I have vaped a fuck ton of. I love it. I vape it basically every single day. So I'm very familiar with how this juice is supposed to taste. And that's what, that's what I'm trying to do with this Goon Low Pro. It promises like, 
you know, Amaze Balls flavor. And so I want to see how Amaze Balls is it going to get with the flavor level. There's a two part top cap. First part goes on, you got your airflow right there, and then there's a red O ring. And then the AFC clicks onto the outside, and you can open, close it, open, close it. So, what I'm going to do, I don't know, let's just leave it full open for right now. If anyone's curious, yes, the top of this is the same size as the full size Goon, as the Goon 22 millimeter. So, you can rotate all your caps. If you bought any fancy caps or tips, for your Goon, you can use them, definitely use them on the Goon Low Pro. So this is a 0.18, I have it set to 81 watts, it's giving me 3.8 volts. Bro trip on the inside, let's have a toot. At full open, it's a lot of clouds, bro clouds. The juice tastes like bro trip, doesn't seem excessively good flavor or anything right now. It kind of just tastes like bro trip. It honestly tastes like if you put bro trip into like a sub ohm tank. Like it's kind of that flavor level, except it feels a little less saturated to me. Okay, that's good. Flavor's quite nice. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this airflow down about halfway, just because Eh, full open, it's a little bit too airy for me. I'm not looking for this to be a cloud chasing atomizer. I'm looking to this to be a flavor atomizer. So I'm gonna turn the airflow down. Much better, wow, much better. Wow, so much better. I do like on the Goon Low Pro, you can just bleh your juice right through the middle. You kind of give it a little bit of a stirring motion. It'll kind of disperse juice all over those that center block and kind of get it to your coils. That's, that's nice. That's really nice. Wow, so much better. So much better of flavor. So yeah, welcome the Goon Low Pro to the review queue. What I'm going to do next week is a full teardown. I'm going to pull that build out of there. We're going to jump up e closey and I'm going to show you from beginning to end how I install a build in there because you do have to be precise. You have to cut your legs and you have to bend them down and you have to kind of go through this whole song and dance. And I've only done that twice so far. So we're going to do it again, probably next week. And then I'm going to spend some more time with it. I really, I really want to put this Goon Low Pro through its paces. I really do. I'm trying to hold this up to a very high standard. 528 Custom Vapes makes good shit. The Goon is I mean, the Goon is easily, the original Goon, easily one of my favorite atomizers of all time. And so I want the Goon Low Pro to hopefully like live up to that expectation. So we'll see how it goes, Goon Low Pro. I'm going to set you aside for now. We're going to talk about that. Oh, okay, fine. It's time to talk about the raw box. A lot of people were telling me different ways to pronounce this. Raw box, RA box. Robox. I don't know. Robox makes sense to me. And yeah, it's got super bright lights, two really large LEDs, and then a flashing red LED. And those happen whether it's in soft mode or hard mode. And someone pointed out last week that soft mode is down and hard mode is up. Oh, like a penis joke. But he's right, soft mode is down, hard mode is up. Ah, uh, Those are your two options. Down is like 3.7 volts and up is five volts. And I don't know if that's before or after the load, so I'm gonna get out a very old school little voltmeter that I have, and I'm gonna try to measure the voltage coming off of this raw box. I'm hoping that this still works. Once upon a time, long time ago, 2010, there was a YouTuber who went by Shan B and she was super dope and she ended up making some pretty dope mods and she made me this little voltmeter and it reads out the voltage. It's got a 510 and it reads out the, the voltage that you're getting and it has my Grim Green G on the back and you can plug an atomizer on to see under load what you're getting. I don't know if this is gonna work. Nope, shit, it just beeps at me. Maybe there needs to be a load on top. Yes, there does need to be a load on top. So let's... Uh, Ooh, close off that. Let's put it in soft mode. Let's see what we're getting. 3.4 volts. 3.4 volts in soft mode. Ready? Hard mode. 4.2 volts. What? So, yeah. This is... <laughs> it's not 5 volts. It's 4.2 volts in hard mode. Which makes a lot of sense because... I was running this on a regulated device and getting about 4.2 volts. 
yeah, those are your two options. You can do 3.2 volts or 4.2 volts under load. And just in the name of science, I'm going to plug this series build on here. So in soft mode, so this is a series build. It's sitting right at 0.31. In soft mode, it's giving me the same thing, 3.4 volts. And in hard mode, uh, it's giving me 4.1 volts. So you're not gonna get five volts from this. It says that up is five volts under load. It's closer to 4.2 volts and soft mode under load is closer to 3.4, 3.3 volts. I can't believe that this still works. Honestly, not the mod, this voltmeter. I'm glad it still works because we're doing a whole lot of science here. So with a much lower resistance atomizer on here, this is a 0.15. I've been using it on a single 18650 mech in soft mode. It's giving me 3.1 volts, which is actually lower than what you would get on a single 18650 mech mod. And in hard mode, it's giving me three volts. What? Three volts? Yes. In hard mode, it's giving me three volts. Yeah, it feels like a dying 18650 battery. I'm assuming that the reason that it's giving me less voltage in hard mode is because it have so, has some sort of amperage limit on it. A lower resistance build at a higher voltage is going to pull a lot more amperage. So I'm assuming that there's some sort of amperage limit cutoff on this. So you can't run something super low on it, which kind of defeats the purpose. I guess maybe that's just in hard mode that it's going to drop your voltage like that. But in soft mode, it was still only giving me 3.1 volts, which is lower than I'd be getting off of a single tube 18650 mod. I guess this would be really good if you run something like a 0.2 and you want to rock it at like four and a half volts, which is exactly how I've been running this Crichton RDA. I'm going to have a review for this very, very soon, maybe this week. I'm gonna plug on this voltmeter one last time. I wanna do a little bit more science with this. This Crichton RDA is exactly at a 0.2. So I'm gonna put it in soft mode. I'm gonna press the button and it's gonna give me 3.3 volts, which for a 0.2, meh, is gonna be very piddly. Very piddly, very cool, cold vapor. In hard mode, it's gonna give me 3.6 volts. So basically like running it unregulated. I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that in soft mode, it's giving you less than what you would get from a single 18650. And I don't like that in hard mode, which is supposed to be five volts on a 0.2, it won't even give me four volts under load. To me, that feels like false advertising and I don't like it. I think you would be better off just buying like a dual parallel unregulated box mod because at least you could run a 0.2 at four volts. And finally, the last science test I wanna do on this raw box is juice. This is gonna be a long vape stuff stuff, but I wanna over drip some juice and I wanna see when I over drip some juice, where inside the mod this is exactly gonna go. All right, I got my recoil deck on there and um, I'm dripping juice. Look, it's, it's dripping up. Oh, it went over the edge. Oh God, I over dripped. Oh, look at that, it went over the edge again. Oh God, what am I doing? Why did it go over the edge? Oh, it went over the edge again. So you can see there's some juice that kind of got back in there. There it is, it's dripping down the front, it's dripping down the side. That's uh, that's gonna be tough to clean up, right? Got some juice in there. In fact, if I just drip, like right here, yeah, juice is gonna, oh, look at that. Why am I spilling so much juice? That sucks. Oh God, it's going down the inside. Now this is obviously exaggerated, but it's a thing that could happen. They say that this Smoant raw box is waterproof not water resistant, but waterproof. So I don't know, there's juice that's dripping down on that battery. There's juice dripping down the battery housing. It's all on the inside there. I'm not, I mean, how am I gonna clean that out? Do you see the juice in there? I can't clean that out. Yeah, it is all over the place in there. It's on both sides. It's dripped down into here. It's, it's all over the circuit board. It's all over the inside of this plastic housing. It's all over the inside of that battery right there.
doesn't seem to have affected anything at all other than it just looks messy and gross there on the inside. And obviously, like I said, yeah, that was really super exaggerated. I mean, super exaggerated. Nobody's gonna over drip that much, but the fact remains, it's a possibility of getting juice inside this, inside the inside terminal, inside this circuit board right here. The circuit board is covered in juice. There's some juice dripping on the little modules. There's some juice in there that I can't get out. And I don't know how to get in there to clean that because this, these little screws right here that hold this plastic on, they are not of something that's readily available. It's those weird star-shaped screws. And even with my tiniest, tiniest screwdriver, I couldn't get those open. I think the only way to clean this out is to get a little star-shaped screwdriver and you're gonna have to undo four screws on each side to take off the plexiglass and to wipe it out. That sucks. <laughs> that really sucks. I wish it were sealed somehow on top. Overall, whatever, let's put a nail in this. I'm not a fan of the Smoant Raw Box. I'm not a fan of the way it looks. I'm not a fan of the way it feels in my hand. And I'm not a fan of the fact that the five volt setting under load only gives you around 4.2 volts. I feel like you'd be better off running a dual parallel unregulated 18650 mod. Maybe like, I don't know, the Titan that works great or literally any other dual 18650 parallel box mod. It's gonna give you a little bit more voltage and it's gonna do the same thing. And there's no lipo on the inside. There's no, oh, that juice is everywhere now. Oh my God, it's everywhere. This top is just so open that there is juice everywhere in there. It does have a built-in 3,300 milliamp hour LiPo pack. So the battery life I've been getting from this, even in hard mode, is, is quite, quite nice. And as nice as it is, it's still not the same kind of battery life that you would get from a dual parallel unregulated box mod. When you run 18650s in parallel, you're doubling the amp limit and you're doubling the milliamp hour of the battery. So if you have two 2000 ma 18650s in there, you're gonna have more battery life than this. And you'll be able to pop the batteries out and charge them and replace them with different batteries. Once this dies, it's like any other LiPo pack mod, you have to plug it in and let it sit. Oh, the juice has leaked to the outside. It has moved around enough that it has come out the outside in the bottom and now I have juice all over my hands. So, bah, there you go. Let's call this, uh, I I'm not recommending the Smoant Raw Box at all, in any capacity. I think it's ugly as fuck. I think it's super uncomfortable to hold. I hate this clicky little BB style button. I don't like that in the hard mode that's supposed to be five volts, it only gives you around four to four and a half volts. There are people out there that this is gonna to appeal to, and if you're one of those people, then cool. More for you. In fact, if any of my subscribers would like to buy a slightly juicy, Smoant raw box from me for the low, low price of two American dollars, go ahead and shoot an email over to contest at Grim Green. This is the first person. So notification squad, this is for you. The first person to email me, contest at grimgreen.com for the low price of two dollars. This pre-juiced, pre-used pre mod can be yours. In fact, if you're watching this video and there's more than like, I don't know, a hundred views on it, chances are it's already been spoken for. So yeah, not recommending that. It's not getting a thumbs up. This will appeal for some people, you know, this will appeal to some people and they will use it and they will love it. But for me and the way I vape objectively, I am not a fan of this device in any capacity. So there you go, it is what it is. Small Ant Raw Box, that went way too long. So let's really quickly jump into some getting to know Grim Green. All right, so Will writes in and says, in the last Tuesday Bro Tuesday, you mentioned The Simpsons. First off, I assume you see my last name, but if it's not, but if you can't, it's Flanders. Ah, 
That's awesome. So I've heard almost every Ned Flanders joke you can think of. I've also heard you mention Rick and Morty in the vlog. I love both of these shows and have wondered what else do you like? What TV shows does Grim Green watch when he isn't shooting video? Thanks for all you do. Jam metal and blow clouds will. Yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. I, I'm a huge fan of The Simpsons. I am a huge Simpsons fan and I am a huge Rick and Morty fan. I, I think... I, I don't know. I love both of those shows. The only reason that I truly love The Simpsons is because it's something I grew up with. The Simpsons came out at the perfect time in my life. I was in the seventh grade. I could relate to Bart Simpson. And ever since the seventh grade, I've just been watching as much of The Simpsons as I can. I don't know if this was in everybody's area, but where I lived in Carson City, Nevada, on Fox at 6 p.m., they would show two episodes of The Simpsons every night. And I would watch it every night. And if I couldn't watch it, I would tape it every single night. And now The Simpsons, they're on like, what, 25 seasons? And I've missed like <laughs> probably the last eight or nine seasons of it, but in its prime, I think that The Simpsons is one of the best shows that has ever existed on cable. I love the characters. I love everything about it. I love The Simpsons. And I love Rick and Morty for the same reason that I love The Simpsons. I think Rick and Morty is a very smart TV show. A lot of the jokes in The Simpsons were, yeah, aimed at kids, but there were a lot of really smart jokes in The Simpsons. And I think it's one of those things where you kind of have to be invested in it. You kind of have to have a different mindset when you're watching it to get some of these jokes. It's the same way with Rick and Morty. As like an animation, sci-fi fantasy fan, I love Rick and Morty on so many levels. I love the characters. I love their interactions. I love all like the sci-fi terminology and portal guns and Earth Dimension C-137 and all of that appeals to me. I love Rick and Morty. As for other TV shows, most of the time if I'm watching TV, it's it's with my significant other. It's with Casey Pickle. And so we compromise on a lot of stuff that we watch. Like I really wanted to watch Daredevil, so she's like, uh, okay, we can watch Daredevil. And she ended up really actually liking it. And that was one of those things that we compromised on. Together, we have watched through all of Breaking Bad, which was unbelievable. We watched through all of Sons of Anarchy, which was unbelievable. We watched through all of Dexter, which was unbelievable. We watched through all of Friends, which I had never seen before. And we watched through all of How I Met Your Mother, as well as Parks and Rec. We've watched all of Parks and Rec. I guess I like either drama or comedy. I loved Breaking Bad, but that show literally gave me a panic attack after every episode. In fact, as you get farther into that show, every episode just gave me anxiety. Like my heart was just racing. And I, I love that. I like when art, which TV shows are art. I love it when art can like evoke that emotion from you. I guess if I have to be as general as I can, I love sci-fi fantasy stuff. I like most of the Marvel stuff that Netflix is putting out. I love The Flash. I love The Green Arrow show. I haven't watched Supergirl, even though there's a lot of people telling me that I should. I just started watching uh, Black Mirror on Netflix, which Ruby's husband Josh recommended to me and it's been really cool as well. My lunch breaks that I take during the day, which don't ever fall at the same time, that's when I watch a show that is just for me. So like, that's when I watch The Flash. That's when I watch Green Arrow. That's when I watch 30 Rock. God damn it, I love 30 Rock. But that's when I watch shows that are, are for me, that I know Casey will have no interest in watching. That's when I watch shows that are for me. Like that's when I watched all of Rick and Morty was on my lunch breaks. For me to truly fall in love with a TV show, it has to be immersive. I have to feel like I know these characters. I have to feel like I'm there with them, which is one of the reasons I was never a huge fan of reality TV. I just... I never jumped on reality TV. I never really liked any like reality TV shows. I like it when I like scripted TV shows that have like a certain atmosphere to them. So when I watch The Flash, I feel like I'm in Central City and, and The Flash is there and I can relate to these characters and I can be kind of immersed in this world for 45 minutes. So yeah, without too much rambling, Will, those are the shows I like. Did I even mention anything? 
thing. I've also, lastly, I've also been going back and watching all of the old Star Trek series. I started with the original series and then I jumped to Voyager. After I finish Voyager, I'm gonna watch The Next Generation. Then after The Next Generation, I'm gonna watch Deep Space Nine because these are all shows that I've watched in their entirety as they were broadcasting, but as an adult, I haven't really, pardon me, I really haven't gone back and watched Voyager. And Voyager's awesome. I love I love Star Trek. I like most everything that's really super nerdy. I, I can tell you shows that I haven't watched, have not watched Game of Thrones. Not even one second of Game of Thrones. And I know people in the comments, you guys are already like, how could you not watch Game of Thrones? It's so good. I'm sorry, I have not watched Game of Thrones. I haven't watched it at all. I, I just subscribed to the internet HBO, what's the HBO Now or HBO Go or something like that. So all the Game of Thrones are on there. Ah, Casey has no interest in watching it. So maybe on my lunch breaks, I'll pick up uh, I'll pick up Game of Thrones and, and we can get through that and you can all say, I told you so. What are your favorite TV shows? I'm always looking for suggestions. Let me know in the comments down below. What TV shows do you just love that you, that you can't get enough of? Let me know down in the comments. Anyway, Will, I hope that answers your question. So right now we're gonna wrap that segment up we're gonna jump right back in to vape stuff stuff all right cool so we got two brand new things joining this second half of the vape stuff stuff the first thing is this it's something that i haven't even opened yet but i am really excited to try it out inside here is the omni rta from shadow vapor shadow vapor already released the mgnt version 2 which i will be doing i think a full standalone review for that rda because it's pretty stellar but i have not even looked at or touched the omni rta yet oh yeah look at that Look at that, it's a little RTA. It looks a lot, looks a lot like the MGNT. It's got an Ultim top cap on there. I'm assuming that this is how you fill it. You unscrew that, yep, two big kidney-shaped juice fill holes there. Let's take off the bottom and look at this deck because I truly and honestly don't know what it looks like. Oh, dang. Uh, looks to be postless. It is a postless deck. Whole lot of airflow coming up through the middle there. Wow, that's a lot of airflow. Looks like it uses flathead screws as well, which is cool. I don't know. I'm excited to build on this. I'm excited to try this out. The very tip top of this has a, an Ultim sort of ring, kind of constructed a lot like the recoil. In fact, I'm interested to see if that is the same size as the recoil. Yeah, let's see. This is a recoil cap. Holy shit! It fits on there. Look at that. It fits on there pretty freaking well. Wow, that's cool. The recoils fit on there. That means this is a macaron drip tip from DHD. Oh, it, it's a little, it's like a touch loose, but oh, okay, it kind of stays on there. Yeah, that actually stays on there pretty freaking well the o-ring got a little bit mashed but if you give it like a little bit of a twist before you put it on yeah i mean that's dope that sits on there that stays on there wow okay cool so the ultim drip tip can use recoil tips and can also use macaron drip tips from dhd which i think is super cool and i'm gonna leave this red do i leave this red what should i do i don't know what to do yeah this green one is substantially looser i don't know what that is you know just slightly different tolerances it is substantially looser but it stays on like if I'm vaping it, it'll stay on there. I don't know, I haven't decided. Let's just leave the Ultim on there for now. So what I need to do real quick is to actually build this. I didn't really think this through, but yes, I have to build this. I'm gonna put a simple round wire build on here. I don't think I have any Claptons or anything just waiting. Um, I might put a round wire build on here. I might put a Fuse Clapton or an Alien on here. I'm not really sure, what should I do? Thoughts, even though you can't tell me because this is pre-recorded, thoughts? I don't know, we'll see where it goes. Uh, let me get this all set up and, and then we'll vape it. All right, well, I got this all built and wicked and filled. It was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Oh, also, I put on a shirt. Uh, I don't really need to explain why. It's just a thing that happened. It's something you're gonna have to deal with. But I'll show you a picture of the build I put on here. I do have to give a shout out once again to Thomas, Mr. Ohm My Coils, 
For the coils, I used the very last of the Fuse Claptons he sent me. It's 26 gauge core with 40 gauge on the outside. They work like a champ, but here's a picture of the deck with my build in it. It's really easy to just clip your coils, place them in there, screw the screws down. I put some cotton through the center and I basically just cut it flush with the end and then like just barely kind of stuffed them down in there. It seems to be wicking great. I've taken like five or six really big pulls on this and I see bubbles happening after I'm done taking a pull and it hasn't been dry or burnt in any way. It seems to work really well. These coils were three millimeters in diameter through the center diameter. So I just pulled the cotton through. There was some resistance. I cut it literally flush with the deck and then I just used a tiny, tiny screwdriver and kind of pressed it down into those little holes. It's great that it hasn't been leaking. That is the first thing I look for in every RTA now is I look in the airflow and see if it's wicking too much and it's actually leaking out the airflow. So far, none of that's been happening. I personally think that this RTA looks super fucking cool. It's not overly tall. It's about as tall as this Warcraft RTA. It's honestly about as tall as like the Pharaoh. Like there are drippers that are this tall and this is a nice little RTA. These coils came out to 0.22. I got them at 63 watts on the Asmodus Minikin Kodama edition. Vape's great. I apologize, I have a fan on, so when I blow vapor, it kind of goes bleh, like circles around. Maybe I'll blow it this way. Let's try this direction. The flavor is really nice. I filled this up with some juice that I got from uh, Vape Mats. This is the coiled e-juice. It's Tiki God. It kind of tastes like, you know, Hawaiian punch or something like that. I find it really delicious. Other people might not. Casey hates it. I actually really like it. This tank seems to be working like fucking amazing. I'm gonna pop this off. Put a, uh, let's put a macaroon tip on there to see if it'll actually stay on there while you're vaping it. Yeah, works. Works great. It actually stays on there pretty well. The green one, not so much. The green one's a little bit loose, but for some reason this red one is just fitting on there much better. So now I need to find a red mod to put this on. I have to get all matchy. I don't know why, I just do. Now I have to find a red mod to put this on. But yeah, welcome. Welcome to the review queue, Mr. Omni RTA from Shadow Vapor. I'll post a link down in the description, actually to Shadow Vapor's Instagram because he has a specific link. If you go to the Shadow Vapor website, it doesn't have any information about this RTA. It actually doesn't even have any information about the MGNT version two. He has a link in his Instagram that goes to a store and the only thing on that store is this RTA and then the MGNT version two. So that's what I'm gonna be linking to in the description. So far, so good. I am pleasantly surprised and I wanna say it again, aesthetically, I love, love, love the look of this tank. I just think it looks so freaking cool. So yeah, cool. Well, I'm gonna set that to the side now and we're gonna talk about the next thing up here in the Tuesday Bro Tuesday review queue. We're gonna be doing the purge. We're gonna be doing the purge mods. Now, I believe that I have in front of me the purge called the Speak No Evil. No, it kind of looks different. So purge mods is sold exclusively through Fast Eddie's vape distribution. And I cannot on their website find this exact mod. I have this right now in single 18650 mode. So it's gonna work like any other mech mod would. Let me plug on this red recoil because that's how I've been using it. And in single 18650 mode, it works great, hits nice and hard. But really, everyone's probably gonna be wondering about the stacked mode. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put this real quick into stacked mode. So to go from single 18650 mode to stacked mode, the first thing you have to do is take off the button. And the button has the most threads that I've ever seen on a button. It's just, it's just ridiculous. This button is big. That is huge. That's as big. It's almost as big as that tank. Holy crap. Look at that. It's almost as big. Take out the big button, take out your battery. And then on this top part, I just wanted to show you this kind of comes off and there's like 
a Cerakoted tube. So this is the tube that is the mech mod. And then this, which is where your 510 is, goes over it. So there's a little bit of a, a space in between there. And I was thinking, I don't know, maybe you could take some paint and like either paint this black or green or change it because that shows through in a couple spots on this like deep engraving. It like shows through right there. Do you see that? So you could put like maybe put a different color on this. I don't know. Just thoughts. Just thoughts. So screw this back down and then you use this extension tubey thing and then now we're getting into stacked 18650 mode this just screws all together and now it becomes a monster just a monster mod once we put this button oh god so many threads so many threads <laughs> yeah now we're in stacked 18650 mode so this is basically going to run a stacked 18650s it's going to be no different than running an unregulated series box except in this instance the batteries are touching each other there's no sled and no mosfet no wiring for it to go through it's just battery on battery love and when you're running something like this you have to be really careful with your batteries make sure you're putting good batteries in here make sure that the wraps aren't damaged or fraying in any capacity they're all nice and solid these are freshly rewrapped batteries and when you're using stacked 18650s, kind of like last week with that Colibri mod where you had to have an 18650 with a slightly protruding top cap on here, you need that for this as well because the batteries have to touch each other. The positive of this needs to touch the negative of this. And if your little tops aren't protruding at all, it's simply not gonna make a connection. And I didn't figure that out until I went through like, four sets of batteries like these rewraps that I got from a subscriber when I was in North Carolina. They have the transformers on them, but no, the tops don't stick out and the wraps get in the way of those making a connection like that. So you have to have batteries that have a slightly protrudy top. These are the best that I've found. These are those Sanyo batteries. Let me look them up real fast. Or no, not Sanyo. I apologize. These are rewrapped LG HD2 batteries. Anyway, make sure that you're using decent batteries. Make sure the wraps are all in really good condition before you plug them in here and start firing away on your mod. Also, when you're running stacked, which is the same as unregulated series, you're going to shoot for a higher resistance. Thankfully, at ECC, uh, MTurk put a build in here. These came out to 0.3 on the nose, which is on the lowest possible end that I would ever want to be for a stacked mod or a series unregulated mod. These are aliens. They're glowing amazingly well. There's literally, I mean, zero ramp up time on this. What I need to do is wick this and juice this so we can vape it. But the RDA that I got with this purge mod, which again, I'm not even 100% sure which purge mod this is, the RDA that came with it has a really kind of weirdly interesting deck. I'll show you a close up of it, but when you look at it, it has a big clamp on top for your positives and then side screws, like regular traditional screw holes on the side for your negative. So your negative goes low and your positive goes high. Very, very similar to that new Cyclone Mods RDA. The Crichton from Cyclone Mods has a very, very similar deck. Ne the, the negative goes in very low and then your upper wrap, your positive goes in very high. Interesting. I just think it's interesting. So what I need to do, these look like three and a half, maybe four millimeter coils. Yeah, there's a lot of space. These could be four millimeter coils in there. Anyway, what I'm gonna do is wick this and juice this up and then we're gonna, we're gonna vape it stacked series unregulated so yeah i got this all wicked up and this rda which again i'm not even sure the name of i'm going to double check the name and we'll, we'll i'll let you know the real name of it but it is a it's it's got to be at least 22 millimeters maybe even a little smaller than 22 millimeters these coils in here that mturk put in here are wide so wicking it ah it's a little tight it's a little tight all the way around and this small of a deck but I'm gonna juice this up with some strawberry, nope, not even strawberries in it. Blueberry banana from, uh, 
you know, freshly squeezed. I'll post a link down in the description to where you can check out this juice, but I am uh, having a little bit of a love affair with this juice right now. Just gonna pulse it, see if it produces the vapors. Oh yeah, angrily, angrily producing the vapors. One of the things you have to keep in mind when you're running like dual parallel or not dual parallel, dual series unregulated box or a stacked mech is to make sure that your cotton is packed in there nice and tight through the center of the coil. That's gonna prevent hot spots. At eight volts, a hot spot is something that you do not want. And you have to keep those coils wet. I mean, wet, wet, all the time, wet, all the time. Ha, holy crap. The top cap of this RDA is the exact same size as the Goon. I can put my Goon DHD cap in here. Pink, why not? Let's rock pink on top of this ridiculous series mod. All the O-rings on this RDA are insanely tight, like maybe borderline too, too tight. I sometimes have a lot of trouble getting this top cap down over this O-ring. Oh yeah, it is nice. It is very, very tight, very, very tight and snappy. So I got my airflow lined up. I got my drip tip on. Here we go. Let's just, let's just have a big old rip on this. The flavor at this high of a voltage is always a little bit less than impressive. What you're getting, what the benefit of running like a stacked mod or like an unregulated series is just warm, warm vapor and so many clouds bro clouds. This top cap does not have an adjustable airflow and for me that's fine because I wouldn't adjust it anywhere. It is a very nice resistance airflow. When you're vaping on something that's series or stacked, unregulated, you're gonna wanna give it a hard pull. You want as much airflow as you can directly hitting your coils so that they stay a little bit cooler. Oh God, I'm so tempted to do some, some dubstep cloud video for this, but I'm not. I'm gonna restrain myself. We did one last week. I'm not gonna do one this week. In series configuration, this purge mod just hits like a brick shit house. It is unbelievable how hard it hits, how warm that vapor is, and how voluminous the clouds are. It's a little ridiculous. A little, a little ridiculous. So yeah. Welcome the Purge Mods to the queue. We're gonna be using this for a little while. I'm gonna try it in both single 18650 and stacked 18650 configurations. So far, the only thing I've noticed that's a little bit wonky about this is the button. It has the tendency to unscrew itself and start protruding from the bottom housing. And then I realize it and I have to like screw it back in. Over time, it just kind of unseats itself and it's really easy to like start unscrewing this and have it go past the bottom and that's definitely not something you want. So I'm constantly trying to like screw it back into place so that it goes below the housing. So when I set this down, the weight of the mod doesn't automatically make it fire, which again, in an unregulated series or stacked configuration is something that you definitely don't want. And I just wanna say this to everybody watching, this is not something for a new vapor. This is something for an experienced vapor, someone who's very familiar with Ohm's law, with battery safety, and with building on unregulated series builds. You're getting an unregulated eight volts off of some freshly charged batteries and you have to make sure that your coil can handle that kind of voltage because otherwise you're going to have a horrible experience. Ridiculous. So yeah, there we go. That's gonna end that vape stuff stuff. Welcome to the Q Purge Mods. I look forward to using you a lot, lot more than I have in the last couple of months. All right, so right now I think it's time to do some quick viewer mails. All right, so we got some viewer mails here. Uh, Skyler writes in and says uh, his subject line was Star Wars and Bar Maidens, hashtag viewer mail. Hey Nick, I figured that title would get your attention, LOL. But anyways, I'm super interested in getting a Stabwood box, the M17 particularly, 
but I am not at all a fan of LiPo batteries. I really enjoy dual 18650 regulated devices and I was highly considering the Minikin Kodama, but then I saw a few reviewers saying how it had really bad battery sag as far as the batteries being a little less than halfway drained than the device is giving a check battery warning, then it would fire and that would annoy the hell out of me, but your opinion and suggestions would be super appreciated, bro. Thanks again, Skyler. And also, I'd be totally cool with you using my name. If you use this in a viewer sale mail segment, that would actually be pretty sick. So yeah, the Minikin Kodama and the Minikin 2 Kodama are different devices. I didn't run into the battery sag problem on the Minikin Kodama. On the Minikin 2 Kodama, yes, I have run into that problem. As soon as my batteries get to like 45%, It'll give me the weak battery warning because of the battery sag. It doesn't utilize the batteries very well. I didn't run into that problem with my original Minikin Kodama, that green guy I had. I did not run into that problem with the original Minikin Kodama. So I don't know if it's a chip issue. They use two different chips in both of those devices. And unfortunately, the one they use in the Minikin 2 Kodama, this guy, does is is heavily affected by battery sag. Uh, if you're not a fan of lipos, ah, uh, I don't know. I don't know. The M17 is it's just great. It's like one of my favorite banger mods. I never have to worry about battery sag because it's using a really powerful lipo. The only downside to the things like the M17 is when it's dead, you have to just let it sit and charge and you can't just swap out the batteries. That's the downfall of a LiPo. I really like LiPos for that reason, for high wattage, no battery sag vaping. I mean, a LiPo powers a DNA 200, I mean, basically perfectly. So uh, maybe take a stronger look at that M17. Maybe maybe you can get over your LiPo-ness. Your, your anti-liponess, I should say. If you don't have your heart set on stab wood, um, there is always the Revenant uh, from Cartel Mods. It is made out of uh, something. Somebody told me what it's made out of. It's not stab wood and it's not acrylic. Resin, it's made out of a resin. They look beautiful. It's a dual 18650. I have no battery sag issues with it. Might be something you might want to look into there, Skylar. Anyway, hope that answers your question. Let's look through another one here. Ah, well, this one isn't vape related, but James write in and says, how do you feel about big beer companies taking over small breweries all over the United States? And do you still consider them craft beer after they sell out? Super interesting question. Um, Yeah, absolutely. I, whatever. That's the way capitalism works. Um, bigger companies have the ability to buy smaller companies and it's up to the smaller companies to decide if yes, they want to sell or if no, they don't want to sell. And even after the sale, even if a big beer company takes over a small beer company, yes, I would still consider them craft beer because to me, craft beer isn't the rarity of it. It's the actual beer itself. So when uh, Ballast Point got bought out, none of their beers changed. The Grapefruit Sculpin was still Grapefruit Sculpin, and it is a craft beer, no matter how readily available it is. So definitely, if something, if, if a small brewery gets bought out and they keep the beers and they keep the, true to the original recipes, the beer is what makes a craft brewery, in my opinion, and not... Uh, not necessarily who owns it, but yeah, interesting question. Thanks for writing that in. <laughs> okay, Gary writes in and says, hey Nick, I love your vlogs. Hey, whose house is that in the intro of the viewer mail? Please don't tell me it's just a random pick. Well, unfortunately, Gary, that is not my house. That is just some stock footage that I purchased online to use in the viewer mail segment. A lot of people think that's my house. That is not my house. That That's not what a house in San Diego looks like. Um, I don't live in a house, I live in an apartment. And yeah, that's, that's not my house. That actually is just some stock footage. Uh, Matt writes in with a pretty interesting question. He says, hey Nick, my name is Matt and I'm from the UK. I watch your videos every week, every week. Please feel free to use this email in one of your videos. Just a quick question about how you feel about clones being made of your recoil RDA. I recently bought the Real Deal Recoil and it's the best RDA I've used. I prefer to use it with the Flavor Bro flavor cap. When looking into buying my recoil, I noticed there were a few sites that sell clones, i.e. Amazon, 
for a stupidly low price. Keep up the good work, and I look forward to more videos in the future. Matt. Um, yeah, absolutely. Great question. Ultimately, nah, I don't care. I, I knew that was a thing that was going to happen anyway because I've been in the vape industry so long. I've seen and used multiple, multiple clones of many, 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 many things. And so when we released the recoil, we knew it was just a matter of time. It took about a month, and then the market was flooded with clones. Um, ultimately, I don't care. You know, whatever. Buy what you can buy. Afford what you can afford. The recoil the recoil is more... I mean, the recoil is is my favorite RDA. I mean, we designed it a very specific way so that it would be a really fantastic RDA. I love the recoil and the recoil is more about uh, like supporting me and Dwayne, you know, within the industry than it is about just owning the RDA. If there's someone out there who's never heard of me, who's never heard of Dwayne, they just saw a picture of the recoil and they want one really bad and they saw the clone and then they bought it, cool. I mean, that's cool for them. Now they have kind of a recoil. I think the recoil is more about being part of something. You know what I mean? Like. There's people online and on the internet who are very loyal to this recoil RDA. And I think when you buy an authentic one, you kind of, I don't know, you kind of become part of that. You kind of become part of that recoil ownership thing. You know what I mean? We're still selling recoils fairly well. The clones haven't hurt our sales in any capacity. So it was something I knew was going to happen. And ultimately, nah, I don't care. Buy what you can buy and afford what you can afford. That's something I've always said. And I stand by that even when my own product was was freaking cloned. Um, I got a, another email here from Ani, A-N-I, Annie, Ani, not really sure. He writes in, or they write in, maybe this is a girl. I don't know, I can't tell, I'm sorry. Writes in and says, hey Nick, just a very quick question because I've been wondering ever since I found your channel just over two years ago. Um, you used to do a lot of mech mod reviews and as a mech user, I always looked forward to your mech mod reviews. I've never seen you with or know of you any owning any Avid Life mechs. Is there any reason or are you just not a fan? Thanks. Um, no, there's no real reason. Um, I, I, I have uh, one of the Ave, or back when they were called Avid Vapor. I have an Avid Vapor mech that I don't remember the name of. Skyline? I want to say it was called Skyline, but I'm not 100% sure if that's what it was called. The build quality was phenomenal. The threads were buttery smooth and it hit really super well. I don't have anything against Avid Life or whatever they do. Um, I've talked to Eric, Eric from AV on a couple of occasions, but he's just not someone that I like talk to regularly or connected with. We never really did any business together. He's never approached me and said, Hey, we got this new mech dropping. Wondering if you wanted to check it out. No big deal. Their mods look super cool. Um, I, I haven't bought one and I haven't used them a lot, but it's not because I don't want to or because I have something against AV life. I just, you know, it's one of those things. I've just, I've just never used. There is a multitude of mods and atomizers and tanks and stuff out there that I've just uh, never used. I never got my hands on the Smoke Tech Alien setup. Just never did. Not because I hate Smoke Tech. It's just one of those things that never happened. So yeah, that's that's just what it is. And generally, that's the reason for anything, for me not using anything. It's not that I'm like anti this or anti that. It's just because I never built a relationship with that particular vendor or they didn't reach out to me and, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Um, let's do, I don't know, let's just do one more. So Nick, Nicholas from Connecticut writes in and says, Hey Nick, I've been a fan for a while and I noticed what seems to be a running joke that I find pretty hilarious, but I'm not really sure where it stems from. Could you give an explanation to the vape capital references? They seem to pop up mainly when you are out canoodling with Dwayne on bro trip videos. Canoodling? Ha! <laughs> Never been accused of canoodling before. My favorite one so far is when you set off a smoke alarm in Arizona at Vapor Dynasty Expo 2016 uh, <laughs> when someone took one vape capital pull. It might be funnier in my head, but it's always made me laugh. I love you and Dwayne together in your videos. You seem like such great friends and it makes me smile to see two dudes that have genuine love for each other. Real friendships in this world are hard to find and it seems you guys are like true soul brothers. Oh God, that's hitting me. That's hitting me a little heavy in the feels there, Nick. Yes, Dwayne, 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 Dwayne's amazing. I mean, Dwayne, 
is an unbelievable person. When I'm not around Dwayne, I want to be around Dwayne. And when I'm around Dwayne, I want to be around Dwayne more. He's just fantastic. He's, he's one of my nearest and dearest and ultimate supreme, supremely best friends. But the vape capital thing, so the vape capital thing was, there's a company called Vape Capital and they do uh, media and videos and they go to vape events and document vape events and they're all really great people and I'm a huge fan of vape capital. Um, we use the vape capital studios to do that really ridiculous blow some O's video. Blow some O's. Blow some O's. Blow some O's. And they're just all around a great group of people. One time at uh, a vape meet up in Orange County, Dwayne and I got roped into judging a cloud comp. And judging cloud comps is quite literally one of my most loathed things. I hate doing it, but I have a very difficult time saying no to people that ask me to judge cloud comps. So me and Dwayne judged a cloud comp and it was a vape capital cloud comp. And if you've ever seen a vape capital cloud comp, they have a pre-recorded countdown and they go, they count backwards They from three, they go three, two, one, and then they count up one, two, three, four, five, and you're supposed to blow out on five, except with Vape Capital, the five, they don't say five, they say Vape Capital. And so sitting there watching round after round after round after round of this cloud comp, and probably within one night hearing it 60 times, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, vape capital. That is where it came from. So every time someone blows a big cloud or Dwayne blows a big cloud, we always just go vape capital. And a vape capital cloud is like, you know, the winner of the cloud comp. It's like the biggest cloud. And that was completely my fault in Arizona because I took one vape capital pull in the hotel room and that was enough to set off the fire alarm. So yeah, that's just where it came from. It was just something dumb and, and we talk about it all the time. Whenever we see someone blowing big clouds, we're just like, hey, check it out, vape capital over there. It's just a thing. I don't know. It is what it is. It's just it's just a way of making fun of uh, big cloud chasers, even though most of the time, yeah, we're big cloud chasers. Anyway, we're going to wrap up that viewer mail segment. Let's end this with a random Random juice tasting. So I think my time with using the Pharaoh to taste all these juices has come to an end. I just I had a good had a good run. We had a good run using the Pharaoh for every juice tasting, but we're gonna mix it up. I wanted to get out my Sub Zero RDA again and use that for juice tasting, just because it's an RDA I love and I wanted I wanted to just use it again. And it has to serve some function, it has to serve some purpose. I can't just have extra vape sh extra vape stuff just sitting around. So I got it out. It's got a build on it. I just rewicked it. It is a 0.21. I have it running at 60. 61 watts and the juice we're going to be trying this week jam monster this is a juice that i have never tried but i see a lot a lot of people using it it comes in these chubby gorilla bottles which if someone wants some advice for using these chubby gorilla bottles i get a lot we use these chubby gorilla bottles these same chubby gorilla bottles for the groom grain signature people are always having problems with them always having problems with these bottles it's because this child proof is very child proof and a lot of people are like trying to push it and sometimes when you when you push it and you turn it that's what you'll hear it sounds like you're going up a roller coaster you seem, it seems that you can't like press hard enough to actually engage that anti, you know, the child safety thing. So easiest way to open these bottles is just squeeze, just squeeze the sides of the bottles and then unscrew it like normal. And then it just magically comes off. Anyway, here we are with Jam Monster. Let's give it a try. This is supposed to be blueberry jam with like a toast sort of component to it like blueberry jam and toast it kind of smells like that i get a very strong blueberry flavor and then there's kind of like i don't know like a bready toasty component let's really get these coils oh so nice and wet 